Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and shout out to my good friends, Niklas and Henrik. And um, I hope it everything went, went fine with the exam. Um, but I was actually inspired to make a Python video after helping out a little bit. So let's get started. In Python, there's something called something named Fast API. So if you like Spring Boot, then you would definitely also like this video right here because let us just go to Fast API Python right there. It is very easy to use this this library. Um, so um, here's the documentation. You can actually you can get started on on just one page. That that, that is the the best libraries out there. The, uh, those are the ones where you can actually read like one page like this, and then you can actually get started. And this is exactly the kind of li uh, library that we're dealing with right here. If you are if you're used to Spring Boot, then you are no, then you're fami familiar with the annotation approach. So you have a you have a function right here, and then you have an annotation on uh, what should actually happen when when you reach this code right here. So when you when you go to this endpoint right here, this is the root endpoint, and this, it, the HTTP method is get. Then we should return hello world. That is what this means right here. Uh, let me just zoom in a bit. So that that is what the, what the first example right here means. Then they have another example on how to use uh, path path variables. Right, that, that is always um, important, especially if you are playing around with REST. Then of course you need to access a resource. So this is the resource ID. In this situation, it's items. Um, and you can also add a query parameter. This is the query parameter right here. And it's actually just a string. So when 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 you get it out here, then it's just a string. So and and in this situation, we are again we are returning some JSON. We are returning an object, um, actually a map, and then then that is then converted into to JSON and then returned in a, in a nicely manner. This fast API is not it does not have a web server uh, by default uh, by itself. So you have to get a, a web server, and then the, the the recommended web server right here is Uvicon. That is a Python lightweight web server, and if you use that, um, it's it's extremely lightweight. It's, it's it's good both for both for development, but you can actually also use it for production if, if you want to. So yeah, feel free to use it for both. And the way that it works is that you write Uvicon, and then you actually say which methods should be run, and then you also need to say which um, app, which which fast API application uh, or fast API. Uh, API that we want to use, and this is what we have set right here. We have used the. Uh, this is why you can use the annotation right here. We are setting this uh, equal to fast API in 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 the top right here. So let us just um, just with just just with this. Let us just get started, so we can actually see uh, that it work. I will copy this line right here because I forgot to to steal that early on. I have a Python project right here. I'm using the Cobalt color scheme, Cobalt 2 actually. So if you want the, the, the same fancy colors as I, as I have, then uh, then go and download that plugin uh, or that uh, that theme. Then you then you will get these colors right here. Okay, and you you can see right here I just stole the code, so it's just a copy paste right here. We have the get app dot get right here, and then we have hello world, and then we have the app gets items and blah 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 blah. Um, so to begin with, I actually like just to try out the the, the default. I like to try out the default um, example from the from the code from from the libraries, and then, then I actually know whether uh, at least the documentation is correct. Right, so that's always a good start. So here we have um, uh, run this. I just want to copy the command right here. So here, here we have this. Then we go to the terminal. I have a terminal in my in the bottom right there. Uh, and then we say reload like this. Let us see what happens. Of course, uh, I have cheated a little bit. I have created a requirements.txt file. So I've created this requirements.txt file and I've added fast API. And I've also added Uvicorn. If you use PyCharm, then you will automatically get a pop up that says, hey, do you want to install the requirements right there? Uh, and I'm using virtual environment. That means that the, they're actually installed into this folder right here. This means that my uh, my global Python, uh, my global Python um, uh, folder will not be will not be polluted with all of these libraries right here. Uh, that is why we use these virtual environments is because then we can just install the the requirements and the dependencies into this folder instead of having it to in, into the global Python eight folder. Okay, 
now it has started up and it was actually quite fast so i did not have to talk that much but uh but what actually happened right here it actually says on uh, local host one uh, one one two seven zero zero one that is my local host port eight thousand now we have an application running right there and i can press Control c to quit okay thank you very much for that i have prepared some curl scripts so that means that we can actually curl we can also use a browser, of course, if you want to use a browser. Yeah, let us just use the browser, actually, just for fun. So if I write HTTP right here, and I need to check right here, HTTP. Actually, I could copy it from here, so I'll, I'll copy it from here. So this this one right here, port 8000, that is the most difficult part of this. So I will just say here, oh, what what is this? Hello, world. And uh, if you want so this shown a, 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 a bit prettier, then you can, there's a JSON pretty, a prettier plugin that you can install to your Chrome browser. Uh, but of course you don't care because usually you would use something like curl or you would use the in, internal, there's a HTTP client in, in your PyCharm application, which you can also use. And I can also just press play right here. So that means now it will run in bash, in my bash terminal right here. Here we have a little world again. It's a bit uh, more difficult to see. Okay, so that was a good uh, start, and then we have the curler, and here we have again port 8000. Now we have the items example. So here we have an item, and we have a 17, that is the ID of the, of the item, and then we have a, uh, a query parameter. Uh, when you make a question mark, then it's, it's all, it can also be called uh, request parameters. That's also the name for it sometimes. But after the question mark, then you know then we have the query parameters. These are usually the one that determines if you have a, some kind of search. Then you can add extra parameters like this, like the, you want to sort it, uh, sort it the, the descending, for instance, or you want to sort it by first name or something like that. That is usually what you use this query parameter right here for. Um, that is usually the purpose, but but for this demonstration right here of the fast API, then we are used, we are misusing it just uh, for fun. So here we have the items right here, and we have the query uh, parameter right there, and then we actually return it right there. Let us see what it actually says. So let us press play. So I'll say play. And here we got item ID 17 and Q equal to Mike. Let us put it out in the browser so we can see what is happening. I need to add some larger fonts for my uh, for my PyCharm when I do these demos right here. But here it says, uh, uh, you know, when you put in the, the, your URL like this in the browser, then you are you are sending a GET HTTP request against this um, against this address right here. Of course, if you need to do some post or put or delete or whatever, one of the other HTTP methods, then you have to use a real HTTP client uh, like Postman or Curl or the built-in uh, HTTP client in, in PyCharm. That is also an option. Okay, so here we have ID 17Q equal to Mike. Yeah, but that, that's really, really good. I am quite happy. So this is the first step. Now we're up and running. But you saw I had to run that annoying an annoying uh, command to actually get started. So let me just clean up my uh, let me just clean up my terminal right here. Oh yeah, there it is. So so here we have the this is um, the, 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 this is the runner. This is the command that actually runs the application right now. I think that was a bit clumsy. Um, so we can do better with that. And uh, there is a much better approach than actually having to run this command right here. So instead of you having to go to a terminal and run uvcorn main app reload, the reload it means that if you do any changes, oh, ah, okay, let me let, let us just show that. So now we are, yeah. So now we, we just started the application again, but uh, now we now we feel like changing the application. Now we feel like changing application on the fly. So we will just write something like uh, query parameter, or something like that. Uh, Q, so then everybody knows that this is a Q. Look, but as soon as I save this file, look what happened. It just refreshed the server. So it refreshed the server with this um, with, with, with my uh, Python program, um, which is cool. So let us go back to the browser and then we execute again. Look, now it says query parameter mic right here. And of course, if I change this to something else, like can I, can I like this, then it says head like instead. Yes, and of course, if I change the ID right there on the path to something else, then this says 10 instead. So this is just to demonstrate that we have access to 
the path variable, that is what this is called. This is called a path variable, and of course you can have as many of these as you want to. And this is a query parameter, the last part that you have right there, or request parameter. Okay, so far so good. So we, now we saw that we can actually re it, it reloads automatically, so this is brilliant for, for development, of course. So now I'm going to stop it, and then we go to the pro programmatic start Python. So look, what that is another Python file that we have... Um, prepared right here. Look what we do now. Now we have a method, uh, a function, a function right here. If you're, if you're a Java programmer, then you, then you, yeah, then you say method by, by default, but in, with Python, of course, it is a function. Also, if you're dealing with JavaScript or TypeScript, it's all functions. So yeah, bear with me if I say method, uh, I, I, I want to say function. So here we have an asynchronous function. So this means that it, it runs asynchronously. Then we have, um, here we have the configuration. So here, I can, now I can set up my UVCorn server. So instead of using the, the port 8000 that we did on the command line, then I, now I can set it to like 5000 instead if I want to, right? So now it's port 5000 suddenly. Um, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to set it to port 8000 again because then I don't have to change my curl scripts. So here, here we have the log level, that is info. So we can set a lot of options right here. And if we feel like it, we can even set more options afterwards. So, um, hello world, we can add some more stuff right here. Uh, um, message. Mm, this is running. Uh, programmatically inside Python. Like this. And what did I do wrong here? So that was the... Yeah, like this. Can we use multi-lines here? Yes, of course we can. Python is quite smart. Can I put that on the last line? Can I put this on the first line? Let us see how this goes. Yeah, it looks just, I just want to format it a bit so it looks a bit better. So we have hello world and the message, the message. Key. So this is a, you know, uh, JSON, right? So this is the key. This is the value. So we have hello as key. We have message as key. And then we have the values over here in the, in the right side. And then we have this part down here. So th what this means is that if this is the main, if this file is the one that is being run, then this, then this will turn out to be true. And then we will end up right here. And then we will run the, then we will, then we will run with uh, asynchronously, then we can actually run this main uh, function right here. This means that we can actually, um, this means that we can actually handle multiple requests at the same time. That is what this what it means. So we are running this asynchronously. Um, and here we are waiting for the server. Yeah, so we stop here and wait for the server. It should serve. Uh, it should serve. Um, let us now try to run this program right here. You can press the little green button right here, which is play, or you can just right click on the file as, as always with Python and PyCharm. Then you can Run programmatic start. Let's see what happens now. Now we're trying to start on the same port, so it's good that we closed the other application that we started from the terminal, or else we would not be able to start the application. It has it has already started. It was it is really really fast and it's really really lightweight. So let us try the scripts again. So now I'll go to curl get. So this will just be hello world. See, this was not what we expected, right? This was not what we expected. Why did it give us this? Ah, it still uses that file, that's why. Okay. Sorry, I just need to change something. Yeah, but that's good. You can see here we have the file name, right? So here we say programmatic, programmatic start like this so this is the this is the program that we want to run so right click again and we say run then we go to curl get and then we say run again yes now it works now i get my message out so that was quite good let us go to the let us go to our browser 
Hello world message. This is running programmatically inside Python. So this means that we did not have to start up the web server. The, there's a good documentation, by the way, on the, on the document uh, on the web server. Also, it's it's quite awesome actually. So if you don't want to use fast API for some reason, uh, maybe you just want to use the lightweight server UVCorn. So if you go and search for that and say Python like this, then you'll end up with a result right here. So here is UVCorn. Here's a good introduction. It's an ASDI web server implementation for Python. HTTP 1.1 and web sockets. Okay, thank you very much. And why did they create this project? Uh, blah, blah, blah has lacked a minimal low level server application with async frameworks. So it is made for this purpose actually. So it, it is quite awesome. Um, of course you can use it without, without fast API, then you just have to, um, you have to do something a bit more, um, um, what you get with fast API is the annotation, the easy way of 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 choosing what to return, in especially for uh, JSON and REST APIs. Like yeah, REST APIs with JSON, then fast API just saves you a lot of stuff. You don't have to say that the content type is uh, application JSON. That was what is what you usually want to write here if it's JSON. Uh, it, that is just part of the application. That is just part of uh, how f what what, what fast API does. So. Yeah. So two cool frameworks, UVCorn and Fast API, and it's very easy. I'll create another video where we go into depth, where we also try the other HTTP methods, because right now we just tried the get. We only tried the get method right here, but we also want to post some data to it, but that will be in the next video. I want to say thank you very much for watching and have a great evening. Bye bye. Mm.